Okay, so um, trying something a little different. I really don't know how I'm gonna feel about this. We gonna, we gonna go ahead and give it a try, I guess. What's going on YouTube, back to another video. If your day's not going good, I hope tomorrow is better. Not subscribe, hit the subscribe button and notification bell. Or subscribe, thank you for your loyalty. In this video, we're gonna be uh, resorting back to our roots and doing pretty much a Q and A, but I'm just gonna be going through my DMs. There's a lot, and I'm sorry, y'all, I don't answer them nowhere near as much. The best way to get your questions answered is in a rating video, or I'm gonna start doing more Q and A's in the broadcast channel. But we're gonna go through those today, and not every question is gonna be in here. I'm only gonna pretty much answer the ones that aren't repetitive. Other than that, let's go ahead and get right into this. Let's, let's go. I guess the best place to go is my requested. There's no order of which I'm doing this. I'm not going to the very bottom, starting bottom up. No, I'm just gonna, go so uh the most recent one that's here it says how do you show your clients pictures before you buy them, before they buy them so jamarcus i don't show my clients the photos before they buy them uh in the sense of sports i'm booked and like they pay before they even see their photos uh they there's a deposit that's sent before i arrive to the shoot and then there's the remaining balance that's sent after the job is done in terms of me physically being there the editing process i mean they already paid for my services so it's not like they get to see the work before they pay for them now if you're talking about if you're doing like i guess freelance work and people want to buy their photos that you took when you were just out there voluntarily you could throw like a big crazy watermark over it or something like that and then just so they can see what it looks like what a watermark covering the whole front of the photo that's the best way i would say you can go about it in that way if you're talking about studio uh once again I am never usually taking studio photos before I'm paid. So next person says, hey, so white polyester back background isn't good. I wouldn't really, it's situational. In terms of using like a cloth backdrop, I would only recommend using black because the shadows won't pick up as much and the wrinkles and all that other stuff. And you could literally just go in Photoshop and make the blacks darker. That's kind of crazy to say, but you could just darken the blacks. That's even crazier or whatever. You can darken it and it would just make it so that it looks very seamless. Um, Cause that's what you want to go for. You want a seamless looking backdrop. You don't want something that you can tell that, that there's a backdrop there. You know, you don't really want that. Not in, not in most cases. So I wouldn't recommend a white polyester backdrop, but I'm not going to say you can't do something dope and creative with that. It's just all about your own creativity. How am I going to go ahead and tell these guys that I answered their stuff in the video? Cause I'm not texting them. I'm. If they're true supporters, you would have been unclicked on the video and seen your question got answered. Lock in, see, lock in. Hello, my name is Emmy, and I'm a photographer from Chicago. I've been a subscriber for three months and I like your content, I appreciate you. I've been interested in sports photography for a while. I graduated high school in 2016. I figured out I wanted to do sports photography in college. I'm trying to get my start. So I was wondering if it was okay for me to show up to a game, for instance, my high school, the high school I graduated from, and shoot in the stand. Pretty much you just wanna go back to your old high school and take some photos for your own personal use to build your portfolio. Yes, you're, you're should, you should be fine. Majority of the time, it's outdoor season. Baseball, softball, it's, it's an outdoor event. You're in a public space. You can take whatever photos you want. Also, you don't need permission from them to post the photos that you take. Majority of the time, unless it's like a private school, uh, but other than that, you don't really need permission to post the photos. Next. Good morning. I hope you're doing well. I'm a beginning photographer and I just started a few months ago and I was wanting to know what you think about upgrading. I own a Rebel, whoa, SL3. I don't know what that is. Okay, so he said he gets good shots. He just has to be close. Your presets I bought get the job done amazingly. But as a perfectionist, I'm wanting more when it comes to the lens. I appreciate you providing the preset. And also as another you know, fellow perfectionist, I understand. I'm debating on moving over to the Sony family, but I don't have the budget. Okay, hey, that's, I, I think you should eventually when you do get the budget, move over to the Sony family. Come on, hey, it's not a coincidence. What upgrading tips would you give me? Also, what is the best way you suggest I start making more money in photography realm so I can achieve the goal? Also, I love your POV videos. Was wanting to know what setup or equipment you use. Okay, so I use a GoPro and a chest mount for my POV videos. Um, also, the bottom piece you use to snap photos of the vertical grill. Okay, um, that's just well, yeah, it's a it's a vertical grill. I definitely do think you should upgrade uh, whenever you have the budget. Join Team Sony, and in terms of making more money, promote your stuff more, take more photos, meet meet more people, network more. That's the best way you're going to make make more money is just by getting more clients. It's really that simple because in a sense right now, you can't raise your prices. So the only thing you can do is do more work. So you just need to find more people that will hire you for certain jobs. 
Hey, I want to get into sports photography at my school. Do you have any tips such as a good beginner camera or tips on making connections? Also, based on your experience, what was your first time shooting a game like? This is a great question, like actually. And you know what? This is the first, I don't know why and no one has ever asked me this, although I think I've said it. Damn, what was my first game? What do you mean though? Okay, okay, I'm gonna answer the first question. Beginner cameras, already answered that. Canon M50, yada, yada, yada. Building connections, I have videos on that as well. Lock in. Your second question though. I don't remember my experience shooting my first game. I'm not gonna lie to you. Okay, if we're talking basketball, um, which I could actually, oof, I could put on the screen. I, I think I have the video on my account of my first time filming a basketball game. I, I mean, that's just video wise. And then photo wise, the same thing. It was at my old high school. It was actually the year, my, it was my graduation year, 2021. Um, I was using the Canon M50 with the 75 to 300 millimeter lens. <laughs> it wasn't it wasn't great by any means compared to the quality of stuff I do in that same gym today But this should show you a side-by-side -side of when I first started with my very first basketball shoot in that gym And then where I am now or even like my very first media day with that school back in 2021 Versus my media day content now like it's it's very crazy uh, the, the the journey that it has been but my experience shooting it, I really can't remember. I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm not gonna sit here and like curate a fake story. Um, I don't remember. I mean, I did give y'all some uh, <laughs> some content. Okay. What free software should I use for photos? Um, none. But I would suggest maybe using a Lightroom, you know, uh, trailer if you can just for now. Hello, I've recently been watching your videos and I want to get into sports photography. I'm settling on buying a Canon 1DX. Oh my God. Do you have any suggestions on a budget lens I could use for a wide variety of sports? Jesus, that's a, oof, 1DX what, Mark 1, Mark 2, Mark 3, is there a Mark 4? No. Great DSLR camera, um, it's really good for photos. You 100% need to go ahead and focus on something that's, you want to make sure it's a 2.8 f-stop. And me just saying that alone kind of throws budget out the window, but you got to work with what you got to work, because you set up a wide variety of sports, so that includes indoor. And you also need something that's going to be a variable zoom, so I would say something that's around like a, like a 24 to 70 type range, like somewhere in that focal range would be very best for a wide variety of sports. Hey man, I just started doing photography and I wanted to ask someone inspiring like you, whether you think it's a good idea to just keep the everyday photos pretty simple and then release a stylized version every so often. I really enjoy messing around with different stuff, but I feel like it's out of place. How you display your photos is entirely up to you. I really do like the idea of like you have some simple ones in there and just if you want to get super creative with your editing style, you throw those on there as well. It's your portfolio, it's your account. I don't see why you, it shouldn't even really be a question. 100% go for it. How do I shoot sports in manual mode? And then you said, I got pics, but they are just grainy. So manual mode isn't going to make your photos grainy. Having a high... Having an ISO will. So manual mode, you're only controlling your shutter, your ISO, and your f-stop, and you know obviously your your focus points. You know the whole graininess is just pretty much probably your camera or your lens and not being able to operate really that well in low light situations. Uh, you said would appreciate it if you can give me some feedback. These are from a month ago, and I oh before I downloaded your presets. Okay, these are cool. They just look dull, but shot wise, these are good. Sharpness is cool. Focusing is good. Yeah, cool with it. Okay. Hey DTV, I've been a sports photographer for almost three years now. Okay. And I'll be heading into college in a couple of months, but I wanted to get some new equipment uh, to up my content quality before I leave. Do you think I should become an LLC before I leave or wait until after college? I'm majoring in sports media and journalism with a minor in marketing. Any advice would be greatly appreciated. Okay, so first of all, that is very dope. Um, uh, in terms of you going to college for this and should you start an LLC right now? I wouldn't start an LLC now until you figure out if this is something you want to do as an individual business. If you want to work for an organization, uh, starting an LLC right now isn't too necessary. I don't. If you do want to just go ahead and just do a bunch of freelance work and have that be your primary source of income even while you're in school, then yes, still start an LLC because, you know, so you can document everything properly in terms of your income. I mean, starting one won't hurt. It won't hurt anything. Even if, like I said, down the road, you are going to eventually want to do your own company and your own business, stuff like that. Even if it's just you, even if, like down the line, if you know you want to do it, you could, you know, set the foundation now while you have the time, you're not bombarded with a bunch of work. So yeah, doing it before, you know, you start college could be beneficial as well. It's really up to you. It doesn't make, it doesn't really matter too much whether you do it or you don't. I think we are good with that. This wasn't meant to be no 50 minute video, man. <laughs>
it was just me answering some of y'all DMs, man, because like I said, there's a whole bunch there. Ones that are super repetitive or that I've answered in YouTube videos, I typically don't answer. If there's any super unique ones that really catch my eye in the moment, I will just go ahead and answer them. But regardless of the fact, here we are. Thank y'all so much for everything. Definitely, like, I appreciate y'all. Let me know what y'all think about this little, like, different kind of angle here. I don't really know how I feel about it. Um, but it just, it, it felt like it, it made sense for the simple fact that I was doing this kind of video. I wouldn't do this angle if I'm using my computer or, like, doing a rating video or anything like that. But if I'm just sitting here talking to y'all, hold on. If I'm just sitting here talking to y'all, why not? Thank y'all for all the support on those recent videos. We are almost at 5K. At this current moment, we are at 4.93, 4.95, one of those things, man. It's, oh my God. Yeah, I literally said in the last video, I believe uh, we're definitely gonna hit 5K before the end of April. And we are at, I think like the 16th of April and we're almost there. So I just gotta dish out some more videos, give y'all some more content and I'm sure we'll hit that probably before next week, honestly, uh, with the, with, at this rate, we'll see though. But other than that, thank y'all so much for everything. Don't forget to drop a like, subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to check out the merch link description down below. You know what I'm saying? Check out the preset link description down below. And don't forget to check out the broadcast link description down below. Definitely gonna be doing some Q&As in there. So definitely make sure you join up. Other than that, thank y'all so much. Don't forget to drop a like, subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to stay creative. See you next time. Peace. Imagine I walked back here and it wasn't recording. I'd have cried.